Welcome back. So far in our investigation of performance metrics, we've looked at a range of these from the standard version of the profit factor and also an enhanced version of this to the use of compound annual growth rate over both maximum and average drawdown figures. We now move on to two metrics that are based on linear regression models. And the first of these is called the coefficient of correlation. This is sometimes called the Pearson coefficient and is denoted by the letter R. And this provides us with a measure of the correlation between two variables. And so in a moment, I'll show you how we can use this on an equity curve in order to give us an idea of the quality of the rise of that equity. Now, the possible values here range from plus one, which means a perfect positive correlation, down to minus one, which means a perfect negative correlation. And then there's all the values in between with zero being an indicator that there's no correlation at all. So let me show you how this can now be used on an equity curve. But first, we'll start with a simple scatter diagram. So here we've got a number of points and through those points, we can draw a line of best fit using uh, linear regression techniques. And what the coefficient of correlation does is look at how well these points sit around that linear regression line in order to tell us how strong that relationship is between the x-axis variables and the y-axis variables. And so we can now apply this technique to our equity curve itself. So as an example, if we have this curve here, we can sample the equity at certain points, so this might be once per hour or once per day, depending on how long your back test is. And we can do that for the entire equity curve. And then using those points, we can draw a line of best fit through that equity curve using linear regression. And so it's the coefficient of correlation that will then tell us how close our points are at fitting to that linear regression line. So for example, this line here might have a value of, let's say, 0 0.6, whereas an equity curve that follows the, the line much more closely might have a value of 0 0.9. And equally, if we have a line that looks much more erratic like this, then that may have value of say 0 0.3. And so by looking at the measure of the coefficient of correlation, it tells us the quality of our equity curve. Now what we haven't looked at here is decreasing equity curves. So if we have any that come down here, again, the coefficient of correlation will tell us the quality of that curve in a downward way because it will be negative. So this one might be 0 0.9. And then you might have another here that's more erratic, which might have a value of minus 0 0.5 and so on. And so by optimising and then using this performance metric, it should allow us to easily identify those equity curves that are both rising, but also rising with a lot of stability in a non-erratic way, which clearly is what we're looking for. OK, so this is the calculation for the coefficient of correlation. Now, don't let this phase you. It does look fairly complex, but really it's very simple to create in code. So basically, as long as you can create the sum of all of your x values along here, the sum of the y values and the squared equivalents, it's very, very simple to then just plug those into this equation to get our r value. And I might actually have this as the subject of a future episode in my advanced MQL coding series, where I can show you how simple it is to code this particular performance metric in MQL5. Now, there is a gotcha here that you need to be aware of, and it's the same as with profit factor and the drawdown based metrics that we looked at earlier on. So profit factor needed a fixed lot size in order to be accurate and to give us meaningful results. With the drawdown based metrics, it was the opposite. We needed there to have a position size that scaled with the equity in the account in order to give us accurate numbers. 
Well, here, with the coefficient of correlation, we return to needing a fixed lot size. And the reason for that is because this is based around a linear regression model, a straight line. And so it scores those systems most highly that map onto a straight line. And you will only get that by having a fixed position size. As soon as you start scaling your position size, you'll find that your equity curve starts to exhibit exponential behaviour. And of course, this doesn't fit to a straight line well at all. And so it will be punished by this particular metric. Click on the link to part 10.3, where we move on to looking at our final performance metric, the coefficient of determination.